Say this loud. This will probably be one of the defining moments in your life as a kingdom citizen this morning. I want to talk about keys to building a stable faith. Keys to building what? A stable faith. I'd like to begin this morning with the questions that always plague life. I call them the mysteries of life. These questions that are constantly in the minds of maybe six billion people in the world, including the one sitting in your chair right now. And here's one I think that you need to write down. There are questions in life we can never answer. First, you must settle that. Because if you don't come to that conclusion, you will always be depressed. I decided that over 30 years ago, so that's why I have no depression. I have no problems. I have no frustrations in my life because I solved that issue 30 years ago. There are questions I will never be able to answer. Number two, there are things in life we can never explain. Settle that now. When you want an explanation for everything, you will always be depressed. There are things in life you will never explain. Number three, write this down. There are things in life we can never change. 30 years ago, I settled that. So I have a good time no matter what happens. You got to settle that. Weeping, worrying, wailing, don't change some things except your blood pressure. So settle it in your heart. There's some things you cannot change. Number four. There are things in life you cannot control. Settle it. If this man wants to leave you, you can put a gallon of oil on his pillar and pray in tongues a million days. If he wants to leave you, that's his will. You can't control it. Get settled in some things in life. This woman want to take drugs? She's your sister? You love her? But you can't control her going back to the base house. There's some things you can't control. You got to settle it. Question number five. There are things in life we cannot stop. You know, I came to that conclusion 30 years ago. There's some things you cannot stop. So what you do is you make arrangement for it to pass you. Let me say it again. There's some things you cannot stop. So you make arrangement for it to pass you. Because if you can't stop it and you get in front of it, it will still go where it's going, but you will be destroyed. Number six, there are things in life we are not responsible for. Say it and write it down. You sent your child to college. You paid the tuition. You tried your best and they still came out and did some dumb things. You could not be responsible for that child's decision. Settle it. I say to you, number seven, there are things in life we cannot exceed. And this is an important one because sometimes we think that we are all of that. One of my favorite statements in life that have kept me at peace is this one. 
I don't know. Say it. Say it again. That's the most powerful statement you can make in life. There are some things that exceed you. It goes beyond me. And it keeps me peaceful. So how do you face life with all these questions? Here's a thought. The key to, to life is a couple of things. Number one, knowing what is your limitation. You've got to know your limitation. If you believe that you are more than you are, then the Bible says you are not wise. You've got to know where the line is drawn, when you've got to stop, when you can't go no further, when you can't get beyond something. You've got to know your limitations, and my limitations keep me peaceful. Success in life, write this down, is when you know what you are responsible for. You know some things that you are responsible for. For example, your own decisions. You cannot blame anyone for something you decided. You have to know your responsibility. But number three is important. You also got to know what is your responsibility and what is not your responsibility. There are some things I discovered that even God doesn't take responsibility for. Like controlling your will. God died on the cross for you gave his life for us, shed his blood for our redemption, went to hell on our behalf, took the keys of death, hell and the grave, came back out of the tomb, rose again, and he still cannot save us without our permission. He knows his limitation. It is self-imposed. He knows what he won't cross. He will never violate your will. So we got to know what we are not responsible for. And this one, is, next one is very important. You got to know what you cannot do. Listen, sometimes your children do dumb things. You shouldn't walk around for 40 years feeling guilty about that. They're old enough now. I remember when my younger brother, who is now a preacher, he's an ordained minister. I remember he got involved in a little bit of negative company and got involved in a little experiment with drugs. And he's the only one in the family that got involved in that. And he's the only one that went to a Christian school, all expense paid. All of us went to government school. Mama died and paid nothing for us. They paid for this one. And he got in drugs. And I remember one day, the police called the house, and I heard my mother say, take him to jail. And she hung the phone up. I said, I love this mother. Why? He's an adult, she said. Do you know he's out of jail now and he's a preacher? Sometimes you got to go to jail to get your anointing. And some of them parents would say, don't send him. Mom would say, send him. He's old enough to make his own decisions. You got to know what you cannot do. You cannot make people do things. Write this down, please. And this is what I have come to save my life 30 years ago. Everybody say, let God be God. Say it loud. Say it louder. Say God loud. Let God be God. Do you know what the greatest temptation in human is, life, is attempting to be God. We have the greatest temptation to be God. Now, we are gods, but we ain't God. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There are things only God can do. Write that down. This message comes right from God to you today. There's some things only God can do. Settle that. Number two, there are things only God knows. You will never know 
everything God knows. And there's some things God knows that he won't tell you. Why? It ain't none of your business. It's a God's business. You don't know what God knows. So let God know what he knows. What you know, you deal with what you know. That's all you want to deal with, what you know. What you don't know, let God know that. That keeps you peaceful. Number three, let God be God. Why? There are things only God understands. And I know you probably said that many times, but it's true. God understands some things only He understands. That's why I go to sleep. I remember one time I was up worrying about something. This was over 30 years ago. I dealt with this 30 years ago. And the Lord says, look, two of us ain't got to be up. <laughs> Spoke to me just clearly. He says, two of us ain't got to be up. I don't slumber, so you sleep. I went to bed. Say, neighbor, don't sweat it. Go to sleep this week. I got no problems. Number four, write this down. There are things only God can explain. Friends, if you try to explain things only God can explain, you're going to become yourself an explanation. An explanation mark. The greatest thing you could ever say when you start dealing with God is, I don't know. This little finite brain that grew up in McCullough Corner tries to argue with God. Are you crazy? You from an island two miles wide. You can talk to the God who rules 500 million galaxies. How dare you? Yeah, but we love to argue with God. There's some things only God can explain. So go to bed. Some of you are putting yourself under unnecessary pressure trying to explain things only God could explain. Relax your brain. I'm going to eat a good sandwich. Let God be God. Why? Because you've got to know your limits. You only know what he allows you to know. And he don't allow you to know too much. Because your mental capacity to contain God's vast knowledge <laughs> is impossible. So God gives us sentences. And he has a library. And this sentence can last you a lifetime. I put this to you. That what God is after is strong faith. Now I'm going to drive this home today. God's going to heal your mind. So everybody say strong faith. Write this down, please. Your faith is only as strong as the test it survived. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them. Thank you.